Okay, I have the 500A in the hallway because this is where I have a ground fault interrupter plug in the bathroom. So I plugged it into the bathroom and that way if there was anything wrong with the machine electrically, it would have popped the breaker instead of going on. Um, there was a little bit of noise when I turn it over um, by hand. It's a little loud. And it's not even doing it now. And all I did was oil the machine. I think this is one that's been sitting for a while. These machines are wonderful. These are the built-in stitches. A lot of times these machines are missing their tops. Um, their face plates have two hinges that often break. On this one, the bottom hinge has popped out, but I'm right now working on um, figuring out um, there's a process when you work on the machine as a mechanic there's a process of removing and replacing the face plate so I just have to get those directions um, there's some kind of a mark on the bed but I'm not even sure if that will come off yet um, the light is not on but look at that it works I think this machine has just been sitting somewhere. So there's another mark on the bed. Very slight. And this has feed dogs that you can do straight. Uh, drop the feed dogs or you move this lever all the way to the left to pop the throat plate off. And that's the stitch length area. And this is the knob. Two knobs actually. It used to confuse my mother because she didn't have the manual. Um, and you need, with this machine, you need the manual. And they're hard to find. I have an original that I had kept. Um, it's got a numbered tension. I mean, they're just, they're wonderful machines. So here's the way it sounds just after oiling the needle bar area. It's a little slower than my last one. Now what that means, um, with it being a little bit slower, it's got the vintage foot pedal and um, I could probably put an electronic foot pedal on this and have a little bit uh, more control. It just means this is vintage. My 1591 is extremely fast um, and has the same kind of vintage foot pedal so they all get broken in differently as people use them. Um, but this speed is not a problem for me, and now I don't even hear the noise that I heard before. So, I'm quite pleased. I, you know, I'm a little, I sound a little quiet or um, down, I guess, because I've been dealing with a lot lately. I haven't been making a lot of videos. I'm trying to learn hand crank embroidery and trying to pack and trying to set new things up at the same time that I'm trying to pack. It's just been a hectic month or so um, and if if you knew how much I actually love this machine. Um, I had mono, mononucleosis when I was 18 and I had to stay in my parents room because the staircase was too hard to get. It. We had this 200 year old house and the staircase was like a ladder and it was too hard for me to get up and down being so weak so I stayed in my parents room and this machine or not this particular one but uh, my mother's machine was in the room off of um, where I was when I was ill and I was ill for like a month um, and the machine kept me company and the do my dog at the time used to sleep under the machine um, at night to keep me company. So the machine and, and my beagle kept me company while I was sick. And, um, you know, this is part of why we need to save sewing history. Because, and this one, 
This is wonderful. This one on the end is stamped Made in USA, which of course they aren't anymore. So there's nothing but good with a, um, a vintage sewing machine.